Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 76 of the Steam Deck Podcast, Flip Screen Games, a weekly podcast all about Valve's portable PC powerhouse, the Steam Deck. I'm your host this week, Stephen Radford, joined as always by my very good friend and co-host, Mr. Max Wright. Ahoy, ahoy, Steve. How you doing, Max? How's it, how's it going? Am I? It's going very well. We've had a very busy week on the channel, haven't we? Yeah, all the ultra stuff. Gonna, yeah. We're going to dive into some Helldivers stuff today. We are. And then we've got some great How questions long... at the back half of the show about Xbox rumors and stuff. Yes, we do. How long have we how long has it been since we've been on a show together, Steve? It's been a few weeks, is it? Or were we literally on last maybe? week? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. No, I think I think I did a show with you last like week. Age. Maybe not the Steam Deck podcast last week. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. But it feels like an age anyway, and it's good yeah. to have you back. Um thank you. It's good to be back. Been too long. I always love it. It has been to too long. And so... I'm talking to you too. This is nice, isn't it? <laughs> so you've been playing Helldivers too. Obviously, I this have, is PlayStation's yeah. first day and date PlayStation game, but also coming to PC. Mm -hmm. uh, has it been running on the deck? I know it had a bit of a rough start. It wasn't initially working or something. And then yes. So very typically with all of the Sony PC releases, there were problems right at the beginning. First of all, it launched uh, it, the, the, the anti-cheat DRM they used, kernel level anti-cheat DRM they used was called NProtect GameGuard. I don't know how they come up with these names, but that basically meant that the game didn't run. I think people were able to circumvent it by um, running the game in desktop mode, but it wasn't working in game mode. Okay. Um, so that was when the game came out. I think it was last week, like, sort of middle of last week. On Friday, a Proton hotfix came out that fixed the issue so the game could now be played in game mode, um, but Valve had not yet given it Steam Deck verification of any kind. But today, sort of almost a week later since they first gave that, that Proton hotfix, I think a week after launch as well, uh, the game has been rated as playable on the Steam Deck. Um, and the reason it's playable and not verified is that it's got very small in-game text, which I can attest to. The text is, is very small at times. Um, sometimes I, what I think at the bottom is like a like a footnote or like a, a bit. It's actually like a piece of dialogue that I want to read, you know. Um, and also that you have to manually configure the graphic settings to get decent performance. Mm -hmm. And yes, you do. Because when I first booted this up, it's rare that I boot up a game on the Steam Deck and go, oh, oh, oh no. Whereas when I boot <laughs> up Helldivers 2 and the opening cutscene, I was like, these visuals are incredible. I couldn't tell if that was like a... a yeah, but what was the uh, problem then? It was like too high of a of a setting that it was putting it in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I booted up the game and it was playing the opening cutscene, I was like, this looks incredible. I couldn't tell if it was an actor or like a, a you know, or, or graphics or whatever. It was, it was amazing. It looked great. Then as soon as you go into the game, it was like 20 FPS, stuttering and i booted into the game and i was like oh dear so I, I opened it up and it was set to sort of some pretty high settings it was custom settings so it wasn't like it was automatically going into like a a, a low or a medium or whatever mm -hmm. um so i started playing around with some things just to get it working and it took me a little while to work out um the de to how to get decent performance out of the game what the settings would be because i would i was messing around with the, the render quality or the render scale to try and get out to work then it was too blurry and then i was trying to sort of mess with some of the settings i was setting it also low and then um in the end, I was able to get some really good performance. What, what I'll do is I'll list out my settings um, and we'll put these settings uh, over on Patreon as a public post. And we'll post a link to that in the description to here. And we'll probably also post it to Twitter as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, X. Um, and so if you need to use it in future or you want to share it with someone because you want to play together, you can share that. But here's what I did to get good performance out of Helldivers 2. Um, I set the frame limit to 45 FPS. Now, that's not going to be the same on... The OLED, uh, sorry, on the normal deck, not the OLED deck, you're going to maybe want to, you could probably do it to 45 FPS. You just won't have the benefit of the, the, the smoothness of that 90 hertz refresh rate um, that you do on the OLED deck. Um, so it sort of kept the 90 hertz refresh rate for the screen. Uh, I turned on VSync in the game so that, that was all matching up. Um, I left the render scale as ultra quality. I sort of turned it down a, a lot. I was playing around with it and I really was able to, even even with ultra quality, get a good 45 FPS. Um uh, anything lower than that, it was too soft, too blurry. Even the sign at the very beginning of the game in the tutorial was anything lower than that was just just really soft. You couldn't really read it. Is so that with any quality, kind of? Is that with any kind of like FSR or? Um, it doesn't specify, but like I that? assume it's going to be FSR. It doesn't specify it's FSR. It just says render quality, mm -hmm. and then it's got the normal sort of like high performance, medium performance sort of like. Then it's got super sampling as well. So I assume it is it is um, some sort of FSR, mm -hmm. but it's not it's not specified as one or the other. Um, then I in this went from the uh, visual settings into sort of more of the graphic settings. I turned off motion blur, depth of field and bloom, and I set the sharpness to 0 0.6. Uh, the texture quality I set to medium, object detail I set to low, I set render distance to high, shadow quality to low, I set particle quality to medium, I set reflection quality and space quality to low. That That's um, 
space as in uh, the, the screen space the reflection. The sc- no, no, space as in like the space, the visualization of space in oh, the sky. Okay, okay. I set that to low. Um, I set ambient occlusion and global illumination to be off, vegetation and terrain quality to medium. I set fog and cloud, cloud quality both to zero. Uh, I set lighting quality to low and then anti aliasing I turned on. Now, that is what I did, and I was quite happy with my performance, but you might prioritize other things. I think things like um, render distance high bit is, is important because mm-hmm. there is, you know, it's it, the levels are quite large. You will have to do a lot of running around with your mates as you're playing, um, so you are going to want to be able to see quite far. Uh, you might want better object detail. Uh, there are times where I've been playing and I've, and I've sort of noticed that the rocks haven't had, like, fantastic textures on them or whatever, but... You know, I, I'm getting good performance, and that, that's what's really, really what's important. But you play around with it from there if you want, see what you can get. But that's how I was able to do it. Um, I played through a tutorial a couple of times because uh, I played it through once and then forgot what, what any of the buttons were. I played a couple of online games, and I spent some time in the ship, and I had like a really consistent 45 FPS. And that, for me, is my preferred way to play AAA games at the moment, or you know, harder to run games is to hit 45 FPS, set the the screen on the deck to sort of max out 45 fps uh, set on v turn on v-sync so that the game does the same uh, and it just feels really smooth it feels so much smoother than 30 fps um, yeah. which is what i've sort of yeah. been aiming for before um so i, I think especially with the back. with the oled i mean 30 is not too bad on the oled because it's still mm-hmm. divisible by into 90 but the fact that it's still running the screen at that 90 hertz refresh rate while yes. tapping the frame rate to 45 fps is really really good i think that's one of the big benefits of the steam deck is the fact that you can just go into the quick access menu at any time and modify that um that yeah. cap because there are games that you do struggle to find a, an, an exact cap. Like there are, when when you can set a proper cap, or there are some games that you play and it's like the cap is in blocks of ten, or or the caps like you can only do between thirty, sixty, or uh, ninety, or if it, if it skips ninety entirely and goes to one twenty, and that could be frustrating. Yeah. So to be able to sort of turn on VSync and set that in in the the Steam settings has been really handy, and it just makes it easier as well to have it be one bar now, so that it automatically sets the best refresh rate for the screen. Uh, yeah, I think that's great. Um, so yeah, I've got the game running really well. I'm really looking forward to playing this uh, with a, a pal in, in sort of LAN because, you know, this is the kind of game that you haven't been able to. If you're playing this on PlayStation or on your PC, you'd have to be apart from each other, whereas the yeah. two of us can be in the same room. He can be on his PC. I can be on my Steam Deck. We can both be having a really good time, um, much the same way that we play games like Monster Hunter and other stuff like that, which we, we you know, they're typically online games. We like to play them together. Um, but as for the actual game, that's that's the Steam Deck settings there. That's the... Let's just get the headline out of the way. That's how it runs on the Steam Deck. That's how I've got it running on the Steam Deck. And it's Deck. solid, oh, solid 45 FPS there. It, yeah, I've, I've, so there's you might get the odd drop, or you might get you know when it's loading there'll be some like stutters, maybe um, textures maybe won't load in as quickly as you as you'd like. But I'm getting a very very playable experience. Um, Did it do any and... kind of shader pre compilation when you first ran the game, like it does on say The Last of Us? No, not really. No, there was no. I I booted it up and I was. You know, straight into there was no menu. I was straight into the opening trailer, okay. opening cutscene, straight into the tutorial. It was very, very quick. So um, I wonder if some of that was... stuff then maybe is like a little micro stutter from like the first time it's, yeah. it's kind of doing the shaders. Um, which obviously, as more and more play, people play it on the Steam, that was one of the beauties of that shader caching that's constantly always downloading. Other people have compiled the shaders for you, so you can just download them from Valve servers. Yep. It's um, yeah, yeah, that's this is. Yeah, unless it was doing it while I was booting up the game and sort of logging into my PSN account and stuff like that, then then um, then yeah, well, it wasn't doing that. But um, yeah, as the actual game, I think I wasn't very interested in this before. I think I even said this to Pete during one of the Flip Screen Games episodes where we t- spoke about this a few months ago, where I said that it didn't interest me. It just looked uninteresting. It looked quite generic and mm-hmm. uh, and um, it didn't seem to have much character. And I was wrong. I was very wrong on that, and I'm happy to admit that. The, the game is very very funny it's got a great sense of humor it's got a really like starship troopers style um like satirical patriotic you know i'm doing my part kind of thing where you are um uh, you know people want to be held over you know you want to be held over you want to serve your your nation uh do it for the flag and, and sort of people treat the flag and sort of treat the the um the, the the super earth that you are part of as like a deity almost you know they say oh 
for flag's sake or you know f- flag save me and stuff like that you know it's like by the uh, nine of... in uh in oblivion or a start, a start. yes yeah. yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of saluting there's a lot of like yeah just... and there's also a lot of like slapstick stuff where like your character can be blown to bits or um there was one game i played where we'd done the i think i chose quite a hard mission because i just sort of also joined a game to see what was going on ended up against some pretty tough robots and i only had like starting equipment uh well, i was with some higher level guys um and we sort of got right to the end of the mission. I was really impressed. Like, I, I died once because I'm an idiot. But uh, we got right to the end of the mission. We had to just wait for it to, to be picked up by our ship and sort of fight off some some dudes, some robots, before we got picked up. And there are things you can cut down. Um, you hold down the left bumper, and then you've got, like, uh, like directional codes at the top. Okay. So you know how you do, like, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA kind of thing for the Konami code? This is, like, to cool down a gun. It's like You hold it down, and you do up, down, right, right, left, or something like that. Are these, like, explained says. in the game, or is this just... They are explained, yeah, the tutorial explains okay, it. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it's they're, more they're, kind they're, of, they're like, very... the, the, like, um, the ocarina, like, music in... Yeah, great, in great. Yeah, time. exactly like that. Yeah, you're, 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 like, pressing a thing in, and then yeah, the yeah. thing that and you're it does putting something. it into, you... Yeah, you throw that down and it creates a point of light on the map and then the ship that's your ship from above you drops down whatever it may be, a piece of equipment, a gun, um, some ammo, you know, whatever it is that you need. Or maybe when you die, you're calling down another hell diver or when, like, when your teammate dies, mm-hmm. you call down another hell diver down by throwing one of these things and, you know, you call for, for support. But um, so you can call down like your gun or you can call down to, like, you know, your equipment at the start, you have basic weapons, but your best, the better weapons are like your machine guns, your sniper rifles and stuff like that. You have to earn the, the money to buy them on your ship to then uh, be able to pull them down in the middle of a mission. Um, and if you run out of ammo, you need to wait for it to respawn to be able to sort of pull it back down again. But someone in the in the level have one that I'd not seen before, which is like a, you cause it down, opens up and just fires mines everywhere. It's supposed to be like an AOE attack. You use it when there's loads of um, enemies around. Um, but he did that right on the point we were supposed to be standing on and defending. So the whole team died, uh, apart from me. I was running around. And now I don't know if we would fail the mission if we all died. But I, I was running around, called in one guy, I died, he called in another guy. And we basically spent the last minute and a half of the game just trying to stay alive while these enemies were coming in because there was only ever one of us alive. Mm-hmm. In the end, we were able to sort of get all of us back to life and get on the ship and, and complete it. And it was it was... It's one of those things that I feel like if I was playing that with a friend of mine, or like you know, it was their four friends, that would have been the time of my life. I'd have had, like, you know, I enjoyed it and I thought it was funny, and I was like, oh, you know, what an idiot! He's really almost ruined it for us. But if that was four friends, we'd have been doubled over laughing. We'd have been, we'd have been in tears of laughter. Um, and I'm really looking forward to playing tomorrow. This with my friends. I think it's, it's, it's got good shooting. It's got, um, it's got some pretty like interesting enemies. It's, it's got. Uh, a really cool like dive mechanic where like you can like you'll be running along and you double tap B the crouch button and you'll do like a dive and you can shoot from prone and the way you the way you're standing or kneeling or being prone is sort of affects the way you shoot the machine gun shoots better if you're prone because it's got feet on it um there's sort of a lot going on here and I can see how it's gonna go up it's almost got that that monster hunter thing of I've seen people with better gear I want to know how I get that gear I want to know how I get that that cool new gun I want to know how I get that piece of armor to make my Helldiver look the way I want my Helldiver to look. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think this is, a, a, you know, it's only £35. It's a pretty, um, you know, almost budget, I guess, if you it's half the price of the usual Sony output. Um, it's good to see Sony supporting PC in this way, and hopefully the fact that they are expecting the PS5 to slow down already, we're in the latter year of its life, maybe we'll start seeing more things like this, day and date. Um, um, PlayStation well, that was, that was like one of the things that um, Hiroki to Toki... Uh, was saying right that they're going to have to expand into more multi-platform etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. so it could be um, that we see more day and day not just with multiplayer but with single player we know that they were expanding into live service but I don't know about you Max I kind of feel like that's dead in the water over oh I, absolutely yeah yeah I, I do think that that Helldivers 2 is, is live service but I think maybe that game was too far in development and it's it's not a specifically a first party so anything they were just sort of publishing it and, and helping out with it so I, yeah, I do think that there's there's no chance of any more sort of specifically from Sony live service stuff. But I do see them still supporting some of these games like Helldivers Two. But um, I do wonder yeah. though why Helldivers Two can be on Steam Deck, but something like Destiny Two, which is from another Sony PlayStation owned studio, um, they seemingly are refusing to to bring it over to Steam Deck or to Linux entirely. And they cite the fact that the anti cheat can't be ported, or that they don't, or they feel like people could bypass it easily on Steam Deck or on on Linux. 
Um, have you encountered anyone cheating or or anything? Like, have you felt felt that while you've been playing playing the game? I've only I've only played a couple of games, and I haven't had that. I do think also that the community is newish. Uh, I've not personally seen it, but like I feel like when I've played like Monsanto World, for example, I've come into the game a year after it, it came out on console because I waited for it to come to PC, uh, and even then I, I then waited another year to actually play it on PC. Um, and immediately you could tell like you people join your game and they would have like there'd be naked massive weapon like as in like a sword or something uh and then like this a silly helmet mm -hmm. and they would be amazing at the game you're like all right they're either really good at the game or they're cheated and i've not seen any of that with this i've not seen anyone in like flashy armor or like super weapons or like too high level or anything like that i've just been you know i've just seen That's people good. my level because i i do think it sort of matches you people around your level um so the matchmaking is yeah. pretty good then, because that's always one of my concerns, especially with um, kind of the early days of a multiplayer game. I often feel like the matchmaking is not great, and I kind of get paired up with people who are way too high level, and it ruins the yeah. experience for me. Well, my issue so far is is that I don't fully understand how it works. Okay. Like the, the when you go into the sort of the table, there's like sections of the map, and it's like you need to liberate these areas. These areas are ninety nine liberated. This is one hundred percent liberated. So it seems like there's some element of like crowdsourcing. People are all working on things together. So it, maybe you do get maybe when you try and join something, uh, it does try and match you with people of your level. But I don't fully understand how that works just yet. I am waiting for my friend who's played a load of it to sort of not be working every night. So I can, and I'm not so I'm not recording these shows so that we can have a good go. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, maybe I'll report back next week on the Flip Screen Games podcast. We can talk about what we've been playing. I'll talk about how I had a great time playing Helldivers because now we understand what to do. Yeah, um, I think what I have be, played is good. Fun. I know you've been playing it. You played obviously played a lot of Ultros, and it's now time to kind of I guess move on to the next thing. I've been playing some Tomb Raider Remastered on Steam Deck as well, yeah. which uh, I'm, I'm on to the third level of Tomb Raider, and I've got mixed feelings about it. There's a lot of things as I a... like about it, and there's a lot of mm -hmm. things I don't like um, as well. Like they. They've messed some stuff up. So I'll talk about that next week on Flip Screen Games Podcast. Presuming there's not anything major like Xbox decides to just stop making video games at all. Yeah. At their, like press event or whatever, uh, which I'm sure we'll have a lot of fallout next week. Uh, but speaking of Ultros, you were running a giveaway, Max, right? We were, yes. So... Um people at Hadoke uh, and Kepler Interactive were very kind and they gave us an extra copy of the game which they said we can give away to someone in our community. Now I've been sort of uh, putting us on Twitter, X and on our Discord um, and there was pretty simple instructions to follow. Uh, so a lot of you went on and watched the review and thanks so much for everyone that has sort of commented on the review and, and given us a like. Um, we, we, we're you know, really excited to do more of this sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks for going to support. I am, I've chosen a winner. I have uh, gone through and sort of put all the people who did everything that was asked of them into a sort of a random generator, uh, and it did give me a winner. So Steve, drum roll, please. Thank you. Oh, I don't do that. People have got earphones on. <laughs> uh, the winner is, it's actually Susan Likes Cats and Boobies, our very own uh, uh, patron producer, Susan Likes Cats and Boobies. So uh, we'll be in touch with you uh, probably after we record maybe tomorrow so as not to spoil the surprise you might want to get it, find out find out for yourself that you've won uh, so i'll be in touch tomorrow uh with the with the code on steam so um congratulations let us know what you think of the game we we uh, I, I really liked it i think that um that it'd be nice to speak to some more people about it so yeah get yourself get your thoughts in the discord and i'll come in and i'll i'll tell you what to do when you inevitably get stuck so um we've, we've, it's on that note we've also got a video coming out if you do play ultros uh of um my sort of top tips my top three things that i wish i knew before i went into the game uh, mm -hmm. that's going to go up today or tomorrow um some really good tips in there really handsome uh guy presenting it oh, as well so uh yeah, yeah. So yeah keep your eyes peeled for that and thanks to yes oh well obviously i, I wore a hat today though so it's a bit messy but um <laughs> But yeah, we've got a lot more in the Steam docket from the community as well that I want to get to. Um, but before we do that, uh, we need to thank our patrons. Do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so many thanks to our patron producers for the month of February. I still feel like we're in February, right? Yeah, we are. In, we are. In, we're we're <laughs> literally halfway through. Yeah. We are. Yeah, it feels like it's going on forever. But they are, of course, Arnold J. Rimmer, Christopher Valenz, Earth Visitor, Gabriel Hasmai, aka Sobi. Snacky Go, Steve Stompy, Susan Likes Cats and Also Boobies, Ty the Dude, and Wacko Huda. Thank you all so much for supporting us over at patreon.com slash flipscreengames. We couldn't do it without you. 
And if you want to support us, you can head on over to patreon.com slash flipscreengames2. You'll be able to find Max's um, settings for Helldivers 2, along with a bunch of other stuff. You can also come and join our Discord, which is the best way to kind of keep in touch with us. If you're playing things like Ultros or Helldivers 2 and you want to talk with Max or talk with the rest of the community about the game, um, then come join our Discord. You can find the links to that and everywhere else we are around the web at flipscreen.com games that's our website i do also want to say that we are pretty active now on tiktok and instagram and youtube shorts so go check those out if short form content is your thing you can find us everywhere just search for flip screen games and you will find us so max you ready to answer some some listener questions i'm always ready to answer listener questions it's my favorite thing to do so we've obviously got the Xbox business event, the thing that everyone's been waiting for, and we're, that's straight after we're done recording. There's going to be a special episode of the Flip Screen Games podcast all about that. So I want to preface this question by saying that because we don't know what's going to be announced in there. There might be something special. I doubt it. It's just a podcast. I think they're probably only doing it to calm down people based on all the leaks yeah. and rumors. Um, but... My dad, Andy Rads, one of our patrons, uh, said, with rumors of an Xbox handheld as a Steam Deck owner, would you buy one? Personally, I have never owned an Xbox and, and personally have no desire to own an Xbox because for me, everything that Xbox, ever since Xbox started doing, um, you know, day and date with PC, play anywhere, um, I have I bought these games on PC and I'm very happy to do so. I support that for Xbox. I buy Games Pass whenever I want to play games that are on Games Pass or Game Pass, whatever. I I think what Xbox does is great because it because it benefits everyone. It benefits uh, you know their their strategy of putting some things on Nintendo Switch, um, some things on PlayStation like Cuphead, some you know, a lot of it on PC. Um a lot of that, you know, speaks to me. The only thing I would want from an Xbox handheld is is the ability to play Game Pass games on handheld. Um, but I also wish that that's something that the, the so Steam Deck would do. That's quite possible. Something that they will announce in the. I could see something like that coming out of the the business event, like the alignment. Thing, yeah. Because rumors were that they were talking about the fact that they wanted every screen to be an Xbox, and that's what they wanted the Xbox mm -hmm. team to think about now. So if it's a PC, you can play Xbox games on it. If it's an Xbox, you can play Xbox games on it. If it's just a TV or a Switch or a Steam Deck, you can play Xbox games on it. What if it's the self-service terminal with Tesco's? What, and, and I go to play I my think, games. I think you could, yeah. I think you could. Yeah. If you can open a browser on that thing, like, you know, do the little hack. Hmm. I about I like, the McDonald's could... one, you know? Oh, yeah. Now, imagine that. You'd have to re-rotate your head like at the yeah, side yeah. to be able be to great. play it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, personally, I think I probably would buy one. I think it would be a pretty compelling product for me. I am an Xbox owner. I, I, I buy a lot of console games on Xbox. I've got a big Xbox library from being an Xbox One owner into the Series X generation. So if I could bring those games with me, I think that would be great. I think one thing I would like to see is, yes, I'd like them to make their own hardware and maybe they partner up with the Surface team to do that because the Surface products are very good. People seem to really like them. Solid hardware, really good integration with Windows. But I'd like an Xbox OS. I think it would be great, whether that's Windows-based with an Xbox skin on top, like a handheld mode, or whether that truly is we're taking the Xbox operating system that is installed on an actual Xbox console and we're putting that onto a handheld. And then we're going to allow other manufacturers to license that in the same way that they license Windows to sell. Um, the one thing that kind of gives me pause about an Xbox handheld is the fact that it's probably going to be locked down in the same way that, a, say, a Switch is. I won't be able to install emulators on it in the same way. I won't be able to go to the Epic Games Store or go to GOG or maybe play some of these fan games like the Celeste mm -hmm. game that you were talking about last week, Max, because they're not going to be installable on there because they're, they're small little experiences that you can just download in desktop mode and kind of port them over. So maybe there's a place for kind of it to be Windows based with that kind of Xbox skin on top. Um, but I do think if it can be like a single SKU that people are targeting, that single performance profile, that's another thing that kind of developers who are developing for Xbox consoles develop for, maybe it kind of hits the same target as the Series X, uh, Series S rather than the that's, Series X. That's what I was about to ask you is, is that, I've never seen a Series S in person, but as far as I know, it's not that big, right? It's like mm -hmm. that sort of size, you know, whatever. Could you compress that down somewhat? You, you definitely could. A, you know, I think make, the, it, make a handheld out of it. 
the the problem is is the the power draw i don't know what an xbox series x uh s x or series s sorry series s what is uh it's, so the, it's, the, it's the white little white console that plays games mate that's what it is <laughs> i i know um but like as in the power <laughs> draw match i know so um the series s gpu power draw is rated at 100 watts maximum um the steam deck tdp is 15 watts i believe uh let's double check that uh yeah 15 watts so you're talking mm -hmm. about like what an eight times um difference you between are. it yes you are so that is pretty so you tough couldn't just stretch that down then okay the, the, i mean you've also got to take into consideration that what the series s is is targeting 1440p up to 4k for some games if they're putting a 720p panel in there rather than targeting 60 fps it's going to target say uh, 30 fps in the same way that steam does that's a possibility yeah i i I do think that um, the this, this Series S already does sort of target that sort of thing. It, it sort of tar you know, it targets that lower range already. I know that yeah. um, it can't do can't do sort of 4K and and yeah, if you were to knock out knock that power down even further, I do think that you could. My my question, my worry about that is that I feel like two SKUs for the Xbox is already too much. Imagine having adding a third one in that, and it feels like them. yeah, we've seen that yeah. issue with like Baldur's Gate three, for example, the fact that it didn't launch on Xbox at all. Because they wanted that feature parity between Series X and Series S, they couldn't do that. Split screen eventually got dropped from the Series S. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a mess, I think. Yeah, um, it's, and, and it's easier to scale these things and think about these things uh, when it's on PC because the their games are designed to be scaled. Whereas on the Xbox, they they you or especially on console rather, game runs, game runs, game runs, and you mm -hmm. might have different modes. You might have performance mode or whatever but there's not like i'm gonna go and toggle all of these things because you don't need all of that stuff on console it's 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 plug in and play and i think that this, the beauty of the steam deck is that it is a pc it's not a handheld console even though it yeah. looks like one it, yeah. it run, looks like one but the amount of stuff you're capable of doing changing but it does come like with that, the things yeah. that a pc comes with though like the issues you had with hell divers right where at first boot you had to go in and configure all the settings and tweak it mm -hmm. and make it work. You couldn't just do what a PlayStation player was going to do with a, uh, with a game of Helldivers, which is open the game and start playing. And you yeah. don't have to do any of that tweaking. I think if Xbox could get it to that point, I think ultimately I want Steam to get it to that point with the Steam Deck. Yeah. I think they're definitely capable of doing that, especially with the program where it's like, you know, it also text that it's not running on a Steam Deck like it does now with The Last of Us, for example, and a bunch of other games. Um, I think that's what Xbox would strive for. And I don't know that they can do that while also maintaining compatibility with all of the Xbox games that people would have in their libraries. It would probably need to be PC based. But then if you're going to restrict it down to just the Xbox store or I guess the Windows store, then that is also going to cause a concern for a lot of people. Unless this is like a dedicated game pass machine um maybe it does become something like a playstation portal where it's more an emphasis on streaming it's a cheaper product yeah. uh, and i then wouldn't want to get it if it was just a st streaming device because you can do all of that on your steam deck my my thought for this was going to be that that it's not going to be a, a, a shrunk down series s that it would be a if their strategy is cloud and we've seen the leaks or we we saw the leaks of their sort of like next thing, which is, yeah. you know, a, a machine that uses streaming or whatever to sort of boost the games up, whether they then focus on a streaming only device, because when they say every screen is an Xbox, I think they don't mean run you run your xbox natively on your, your steam deck i think they mean you just cloud stream because they that's what their their future is and we know that when they were trying to buy activision and people that you know sony were fighting about call of duty but sort of the main concern was cloud streaming right it was our our microsoft going to sort of be, have the monopoly in cloud streaming and that's why they allowed geforce now i think it was or whichever whichever other um service it was to sort of have exclusive access to some of their games uh to to you know let let the that deal go through um mm -hmm. so i feel like if they were going to do anything I, a, a, a streaming device would align better with their their plan or what they've said their plan is obviously that plan could have completely changed now and we're going to find out in 20 I, minutes i don't think happen. it will i don't think it will have changed so i just pulled up the 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 kind of slides that we were talking about during that leak which if people forget came out during that ftc 
um, fight with Activision and they accidentally uploaded a, an unredacted document and it was all completely their fault. Um, yeah. So I don't have any issue talking about this in the same way that the Insomniac stuff was stolen. This was Microsoft that leaked it. Yes. Um, so they said, our vision is to develop a next generation hybrid game platform capable of leveraging the combined power of the client and the cloud. So that's what you were talking about. Optimized for real-time game plan creators will enable new levels of performance beyond cap capabilities of the client hardware alone. And I think that is a, a very a differentiator. But one key point in there that they said they were going to wrap up Q1 of um, calendar year of 2023. So this would have been figured out last April was whether they were going to go down ARM or x64. So whether it's going to be an ARM based processor like a Steam, uh, like a Switch is, like your phone is, that could potentially bring a, a lot more power. Or they stick with the current architecture, which is x86, x64, same as what's in a Steam Deck. If they go down that ARM based route, it's quite possible that they could easily make a handheld that that kind of max that gets that additional performance out of it but it would mean that all of the games that have been built previously would have to eventually essentially be emulated they wouldn't be able to run natively unless they were recompiled so it's possible that that's not the strategy that they want to go with um but an xbox handheld really kind of excites me in the same way that there was that rumor of the playstation handheld as well like the the next gen yeah. ps vita that we didn't talk about um, I think the Steam Deck's really come out of the gate and kind of put kind of uh, put a fire under all of these companies to be like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have got out of the handheld market, especially with how well the Switch has done as well. Yeah, I do think that, um, I've said this on the show a few times, that the the Switch ran so the Steam Deck could, sorry, the Switch walked so the Steam Deck could run, even though the Switch is doing so much better. I think that there's the Switch for everyone, like I'm talking, uh, the RG Ally, Legion Go, all of these things have the Switch to answer for because Nintendo proved that you could do it and you can make it affordable and that there's a market for it and that it's not just the INEOs and the GDP wins of the 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 world that are making niche handhelds. Um mm. so I, I I yeah. I I'll Yeah, I I, I I I agree with you. I I mean I, I think it was a case of PlayStation X did that. Obviously, Xbox was never in the handheld market, and now the technology is finally caught up to a point where the games that the people want to make and be able to play are playable on these handheld devices like the Steam Deck. And maybe it's now time for these these other companies to kind of jump back into the mix. There's one thing that Valve has that the kind of no other company does have, and that is your entire PC library. Everyone buys games yep. on Steam. No one's buying games on the Windows Store. I mean, obviously someone is, but the thing that Xbox has is Game Pass. And if they're willing to bring that everywhere, which it seems like maybe is their strategy, then I don't know why they would need to build a handheld themselves when you can get Game Pass on a Steam Deck or an RG Ally or a Switch or a PlayStation or wherever else you are and you'll be able to play, play your games. Whether they're native or streaming, I don't know. You can obviously already stream games to the Steam Deck. Um, mm -hmm. officially through Microsoft's Edge browser or using something like Greenlight, those options are already there. Or there's XB Play, which you can buy on this on the Steam store, which I think is just Greenlight, but it's easy. you don't have to configure it, so it costs money, I think is what that is. But, but okay, yeah, there are okay. there are options. And I and I look forward to yeah, I look forward to seeing in I mean by the time this comes out, uh, all of this um speculation would have been for for naught because we'll know what has and hasn't been said. Yeah, but yeah. um but yeah, I, I yeah, I, I I do like I do like the future of Xbox. I do like people seem to be thinking this is all doom and gloom and that this means Xbox is going third party or that they're giving all their stuff away. And we've seen Xbox fans react to it. We've seen PlayStation fans react to it. But I just don't see why this isn't a net positive for everyone. That Xbox is, their strategy is to get, uh, that you know, they're not about putting hardware in people's hands. They've already said they want to put an Xbox in every screen. They want, people, they want you to buy their subscriptions. That's where their money comes from. This does that. This puts software in people's hands. Well, we spoke a little bit about this on the Flip Screen Games podcast, um, me and Pete. So if you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to it. it was, I think it was last week's episode uh, where all these kind of rumors came about that Xbox was going to go multi-platform. And the, the main concern I think people have is that if they go multi-platform, what's the incentive to make consoles anymore? And then the library that I've bought and invested all of this money into, both physical and digital, can no longer carry over with me. And I maybe have spent hundreds or thousands of pounds uh, on those games, and now they're completely dead. I, I'm never going to get my money back. I'm never going to see any of that. Um, so I can understand that concern. 
but I think that your library is going to be accessible wherever you are. And I would hope that, you know, if you bought a game on Xbox and they bring out an Xbox handheld, that if it's compatible, it'll, it'll be playable and it's playable there. Yeah, I agree with you there. So we've got one more question from Scale Speeder. And they were, if I could be so bold as to suggest another talking point for the podcast, of course you can. To further entice cool. gamers who don't have a Steam library to buy a Steam Deck, could it come with a choice of four uh, f- of free four game packages to get you started? For example, an RPG package, a shooter, or platformer, or a mixed package. If so, what four games would you want to see in a Steam Deck starter package? So, for one, I do think this is wishful thinking. I think this this is. I think what, just because Nintendo gave away the, uh, you know, a couple, every now and again you get a game. I do think that a four game package is wishful thinking. However, obviously, I would want that. Uh, so, I would actually, th- I think that if I was going to pick something that I think was likely, I would say it's going to be, um, it's going to be like Valve games. It's going to be Half Life. Yeah, it's going to be Half Life. Portal. It's going to be all of those games. Yeah, because yeah, if they've given those away in the past as well. Like I, I mm-hmm. remember getting Portal Two for free. Yeah, I think if you're going to do that, you send the 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 Steam Deck, which now has an orange button and orange stuff behind it, in an orange box. You call it the orange box. You open that up, and inside is Team Fortress Two, Portal Two, Portal, like an updated orange box that's got Half Life Two and all those sort of games in it. You know, so you buy that, and that is your your thing. If I could choose a package, I think that you should have options there of like um, the games have all got to be verified. Obviously, I think is is the case. Yeah. That, but I would pick things like. Um, like a souls like package so if you want to play sort of these souls games you can do like that an rpg package a strategy package you know um so you can as a gamer get an idea of what you can play on the steam deck a retro package that has got like retro games in it things like that you know just so that as a buyer while the, the the promise of you can play anything is great being able to to play specifically oh i know i i would I, I like playing pc games oh i can play these real-time strategy games on my Steam Deck. I didn't realize that that was sort of would work as well as it does, and it's. Sort of I think that's what it needs to be. It's like a mix of of four different games because uh, I don't. I think it's very much wishful thinking anyway. But to expect there to be multiple of these packages that you can buy that you kind of get with the the Steam Steam Deck, I would imagine what's more likely you buy a Steam Deck, they let you like have some credit or pick some games mm-hmm. that come with it, that kind of thing, so you can buy at least one game. Uh, but I'd want to see like a mix. I'd want to see something like one of the PlayStation games in there so people can kind of get a, uh, an idea of like, wow, I can play these PlayStation games, at, like something like um, God of War, for example. I'd probably put something like Forza Horizon on there because I do think that's a really impressive game to see running on the on the Steam Deck. But then I'd also want to include some smaller indie titles that aren't available on other platforms. Um Previously, I'd have said something like Vampire Survivors, but obviously that's yeah. uh, come to other other platforms. But I think there's a lot of games that are kind of stuck on on PC. Things like real time strategy games, for example, that never really have translated well uh, over to a controller. But with the power of Steam input, with the track pads, with uh, you know the community layouts, all of that kind of thing, they are very much playable. So something like an Age of Empires or an Armor in there, do something like that. Um, yeah, it's it's, uh, but I think the problem is every player is different. Every player is going to want different games, um, so it's tough. Yeah, I think I think you're right that credit does make more sense, uh, and uh, yeah, that, that there are players that are going to sort of struggle to find sort of the things that they want to play. Um, but but yeah, I, I think if you give credit, then it just it just makes the thing a little bit cheaper, and that takes away the fun aspect of it, you know, because otherwise why not just make the thing cheaper if you're just going to give them 50 quid in steam credit because it's it's money directly out of your pocket then in a, in a, in a way mm-hmm. you know um instead of you know the still getting the 30 percent, you now get none of it you know um i mean but, it's well but, worth yeah. checking out like free to play games as well like um aperture desk job for example is a great example mm-hmm. of what you can do with the uh, the steam deck um and that obviously was created to launch alongside the steam deck but Valve has like Counter Strike Two. It's always at the top. If you want a good shooter, that's there. The finals, which has recently become playable on the Steam Deck, is phenomenal. You can play things like Brawlhalla, which I know had like its day. I don't know if it's as popular as it as it was. Um, all sure of those still kind of games to an audience for it, right? Yeah, Path of Exile, which is like a a Diablo style ARPG. 
all of these games are free to play. I like can just download them and give them a try. So if you're if you're kind of struggling for games, um, like maybe you spent your budget on your on your Steam Deck and you don't necessarily have enough money to to kind of pick something up at the moment, those are all well worth checking out. Check out the free to play section on the on the Steam Store. There's always a bunch of stuff there. There's always something new that's that's kind of been added. Um, and the sales, like there's so many sales. I mean, Microsoft's oh. got like a a sell on until the end of February now. It's like 85% off some of their games. So you can pick up some of the Far Cry games, which granted, some of them are really old. Same with the Assassin's Creed games. Some of them are really old, but you can get them for like five quid. And it's like, yep. that's well worth checking out. Um, do you ever and... do you ever get lost when you're uh, like hopping on the Steam tour to have a look around? Do you ever get lost uh, just going into like, oh, wish list, wish list, wish list, and end up just adding like 50 games to your wish mm-hmm. list that you then take off like six months later when you realize you don't need any of them? Yeah, I'm like seven layers deep and uh, I've not bought anything. Yeah. And then half the time I go back and the store breaks somewhat and then it's like <laughs> use touch and I'm like, oh, okay, this is completely screwed up. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. Um, I wish they would fix the store at some point. It would be. It would I be try to avoid using the store on the Steam Deck because I I don't I never want to go on the the great on deck section or the that section because I know that everything runs on deck, so I'm not that bothered by what Steam tells me is not, is great on deck. Uh, I'm sure there's a decky plugin that would fix that. To be honest, mm-hmm. um, I just don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I agree with you. I always buy uh, games on like my phone or um or on my PC. And then mm-hmm. they'll just show up in my library on on my Steam Deck, and it's a much yeah. nicer experience than having to uh, go yeah. through the store. Half the time, I've bought, gone to buy games through the checkout on the Steam Steam Deck as well. The payment doesn't work; like it, it just comes to a screen and it just says loading forever and ever and ever. Yeah, I've had that a few. T- I had that when I bought my my OLED. Uh, that's why I nearly didn't get an OLED, if you remember, um, because it's just I, so, I it's frustrating. I think it's because it like the the like verification system, you know, with some banks doesn't work properly. I don't know. It's mm. just, it's annoying. Yeah, it's annoying, and I um, I'm happy to I'm happy to to just do it the old fashioned way, really, because because it just it just feels like a nicer experience, you know. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's it for for today's show. Uh, don't forget to check out the link in the description for Max's Helldivers uh, settings. They'll be over on Patreon, um, and come and check out our website join the discord if you find everywhere we are on the web at flipscreen.games that's our website uh, and we shall see you all on the next one bye